Okay guys, just want to do a quick video, just to um, give you an update on the coronal hull um, and the magneto pools. I have just put a video of the last 24 hours of the magneto pools on YouTube and on Patreon. Um, as, as you can see, this coronal hull here is now turning earth facing. Um, when I talk about the IMF, which is the interplanetary magnetic field, the reason why it's connected already is because the sun's magnetic field can no longer contain this area here, right, that contain the hot gases, so the magnetic field stretches far out into space from this part here, okay? Now, that interacts with Earth before the solar wind arrives, okay? So the lithospheric movements occur when this happens, which leads to earthquakes and stuff like that, okay? Now, this, I know this bit, look, this coronal hole here is now Earth facing directly, but it takes about three days for that solar wind to arrive, Okay, particles, charged particles, electrons, protons, alpha particles is what comes from these holes. Okay, this is what compresses our magnetosphere and causes our green auroras, like I've been over before. Um, however, so this coronal hole would have to be over in this section here before it actually even arrives at Earth. Okay, 93 million miles away, so it's quite far away. For comparison, Earth, you see this U and T here, if you follow my curves, that's about the size of Earth compared to the Sun here, okay? And we're looking at the Sun in 193 angstroms, just so we can get a better clue of how strong and how big the coronal oil is. As you can see, it's stretching across the transectorial region and up to the upper left limb. This bit down here should not be affecting Earth that much, um, but this certainly will, okay? And I'll run over this one quickly, if it ever loads. Okay, so as you can see here, that's from the coronal hole I just showed you. Okay, so this is this is the density. Look, plasma density, which is like protons, um, and this always arrives first before the actual solar wind. We'll get we'll get a blast of protons first along this line. Okay, look, and it comes in about three days. Okay, so if we look to the twenty-first, that's when it's going to start making impact. Um, on our magnetic field, okay, and then the solar wind arrives, okay. This is the solar wind. You see this bl blue hue here? That's like the proton density. That's this bit here, okay. And then the solar wind behind it comes like that. It's always protons first, okay. So that just gives you an idea of what you're looking at here. The sun is always in the center. Earth is always to the right. This is a bird's eye view, okay. This is the geosynchronous orbit. Um, yeah, just so you can get a better understanding of what you're looking at here, okay? So this is the velocity of the solar wind. Yep, like I said, the blue hue is this bit here, and this is the coronal hull I showed you, and this is the solar wind coming from that coronal hull, okay? Solar wind coming from that coronal hull that's now turning Earth facing. Okay, so if we look at ACE telemetry, this gives you an idea of the solar wind. Okay, so when this phi angle reaches 180, that means it's connected to Earth. This is the density, so like the proton density, the solar wind. This can sometimes this can go up to 100, so we know it's going to be a very strong solar wind. Um, it's per cubic centimeters. Obviously, if you get over 30 protons in a cubic centimeter in space, that's a lot of protons. So it's, it's just very strong. This is the plasma wind speed. Okay, and this is literally the temperature. So as you can see here, just to, just to run over it quickly, obviously we've had some spikes in the solar wind from the, the parted coronal hole, which has gone past us now, and it didn't reach very high. It got to about 460. Okay, that's, that's not a very strong solar wind. So if we go to, I'm pretty sure it's this one, the magnetopause data, this is a side view of Earth. Okay, this is our bow shock, this is our magnetosphere, okay, this is our plasmosphere, plasmosphere, okay, plasmosphere, plasmosphere, magnetosphere, okay. So if we look here, this is under a severe compression of cosmic radiation that's not coming from our sun. The coronal hole stream hasn't even arrived yet, remember, okay, so this is constantly red at the moment. And this is what's causing a lot of disruption in our magneto tail. And I've been over this before, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. If you look at my videos, you'll see what I mean. Okay, I'll put this down here. 
put this down here and click on this one so this is a solar wind velocity so this is the speed of the solar wind that's hitting earth's magnetic field okay so as you can see here look 668 kilometers a second okay as i just showed you here the speed only got up to about 460 kilometers per second okay this is this is a satellite this is this is the telemetry that tells us the solar wind stream the strength okay this is telling us something completely different because it's not the solar wind this is being compressed from cosmic waves of energy okay cosmic waves of energy and this is getting up to like 1800 kilometers a second because we're having cosmic wave blasts from the second solar wind coming from under the ecliptic okay so this is what this chart shows you this is what this graph shows you okay direction of the solar wind coming the sun would be here direction of the solar wind coming here and this our bow shock is under extreme amount of charged particle interaction okay this is this if you go back about six years this was always just yellow there was no red and as you can see look on the graph it's, it's very very charged okay and that's just because of the cosmic radiation it's not our solar wind remember the coronal hole has not arrived yet the wind stream from that has not arrived yet okay so we come off this so like I say if you want to ever look at this this just gives us a velocity of the wind speed that's hitting our magnetic field if we come off this quickly and go to this one uh, sorry bear with me okay this is our magneto pause okay so it's a bit closer as you can see it's bird's eye view again this is the geosynchronous orbit of the satellites here and again this is um, under extreme heat extreme heat and it's all coming from under the ecliptic under the ecliptic like I said so wind stream hasn't arrived from the Sun yet so it's definitely not the Sun solar wind Okay, I just wanted to run over them bits with you, just to give you a bit of a clarification of how to read the coronal holes, um, what the IMF means, in interplanetary magnetic field from the coronal holes before the solar wind arrives, which causes lithospheric movements, and I wanted you to just sort of get an understanding of what these graphs mean, um, and why the solar wind speed is completely different to what we're actually receiving at our magnetosphere, okay, it's not from the solar wind, from the sun, okay, so I just thought I'd run over that. Um, I did do a post on Patreon about the magneto pause and the disruption over the last 24 hours. Um, I'm always monitoring it, and I truly appreciate all your support over in Patreon. I mean, just one dollar a month makes a huge difference to me continue this work and bring you the information. Um, if you go through my Patreon, you will see that there's um, there is a lot of information, a lot of written out essays with pictures and explanations that are explained in the pictures and so it's, it takes a long time to compile and I want to do it just to help you guys out if I could do this full time for you guys it would help me reach so many more people and that is my ultimate goal I just want to help people and with your help I can help more people that is it that is it that is all I need and I really hope I get there I, I need a thousand patrons to do this full time I'm up to 105 now so I'm gradually getting there I mean I've not had patreon long and I'm so appreciative of all your support, all the guys that are already supporting. You've been amazing. Um, and I will continue to post on Facebook and Patreon and do some YouTube videos. I'll try and fit it all in as much as I can. Okay? So uh, much love to everyone. Have a brilliant weekend, and I will see you all soon. Take care.